Good evening, everybody. Forgot to set up my alerts, so just bear with me a second here. You'll get a hopefully a few alerts popping up. That one never works anyway, so. All right. So, how's everybody doing tonight? We are back for more Crusader Kings 2. We've uh, set up a fairly substantial empire for ourselves. The HRE is growing and going strong. Uh, we actually, you know what, I'll just jump straight into the game and we can talk a little bit about where we are. Hello, Endors. How are you doing? I saw you playing Clicker Heroes earlier today while I was busy raging at uh, Europa Universalis 4. <clears throat> so. All right. Let's talk a little bit about where we are in the game. So first of all, uh, we began as Charlemagne. We had uh, the two kingdoms of Frank, well, sort of two kingdoms of Francia. We had West Francia sort of taking this horseshoe shape over here, and then Middle Francia taking care of things like Burgundy, uh, East Francia, um, and then uh, as a sort of the way that the game sets you up, you conquer Saxony, you conquer Lombardy, and those are effectively scripted events. Uh, we'll still have a little bit more that we need to uh, to claim to get the full area. Oh, and Crackly. Thank you, uh, Endors. Alright, hopefully that fixes the, the issues. <clears throat> so yeah, we've got a little bit of room for uh, improvements here. So for instance, we've got the Kingdom of Lombardy, which will also, you know, include the last remaining little bits of of that kingdom. Now, uh, we already went to war with the Byzantine Empire. It wound up working very well for us, but of course the challenge now is that we've already gone to war with them once. The truce will end in 857, so effectively we're looking at another eight years uh, of a truce, and we don't really want to do that. Um, so there's a couple of things that we're already working on. Uh, we are starting off, sorry, we're starting off with uh, waiting for this, we're waiting for the Basileus basically to die. He's 59 years old. Um, he's, you know, probably not long for this world. The next thing that we're doing is actually working an assassination on the Sultan, or the Amayad Sultan. Uh, now he's already fighting a rebellion right now. But he's 45. I mean, again, not necessarily that partic that young uh, for this game, but uh, in comparison, I think we're yeah we're still 32. And uh, in this case here, it's it's possible. Like if we think about, um, if we sort of think about the time that this guy's going to be active. Uh, chances are we will have more success killing him than trying to. Uh, than just trying to wait out the 10 years. So again, if we wanted to break the truce, we can. We wind up paying with over half of our prestige. And then uh, the religionists of that particular... That, that particular religion uh, doesn't like me very much. Now, I mean, the other thing too is this one, it's uh, 853. So we don't actually have that long to wait. It's just another four years. But... As always, uh, we're in a position of relative strength, and so the best situation would be for us to take advantage of it and, uh, and expand our empire as much as we can. Hello, Jesse Quill. How are you doing? I didn't catch when you were streaming, but it was Saints Row 4 tonight, wasn't it? For those of you who don't know, and of course everybody's just filing in right now, I guess it's a little bit of a later uh later stream for me tonight so uh, i had a little bit of running around to do i suspect probably on the fridays there's two ways that fridays could turn out for me uh one could be that it works 4 p.m to 11 30 p.m oh, okay so you just finished excellent 
I actually have, I really, really liked Saints Row 4. I played it with my uh, old high school, high school friend, uh, A. Newcomb, who occasionally stops by here. Hey, Skeleton Kill Man. Um, so we did the opening and the first couple of missions, and I had such a blast. Um, for everything from where you're climbing up the rocket to the... Um, like in the and the Aerosmith running in the background to the decisions that you make as president, just everything about that game I really liked. I love the defense sequence where you are uh, taking out the White House or sorry, taking out the alien ships of the White House defense system. I had a ton of of fun doing it, uh, but we couldn't get the times to work out, so I haven't actually played beyond the first couple of of moments. So, if ever you are inclined to doing co op with uh, with somebody new you can count me in for sure but for everybody who is uh new or maybe has uh has not seen jesse quill around before she is a fellow team panda member uh more importantly somebody who i consider a very good friend somebody who i also mod for and easily one of my favorite casters on twitch um i have started saying and i i think this is uh very much true it's it's always been the case but um, I maybe haven't quite put it out there as, as much as I should, but there's quite a few commonalities between the streams. I will definitely say that she is much better than me. So uh, if you want a higher quality stream, I highly recommend that you, you stop by her place. But she actually really focuses on... Um, <clears throat> well, okay, so I'll give, maybe, the, maybe I should explain what I do first and then, and then bring it through and, and Jesse Quills. Like... Obviously, I have a little bit of a unique setup for myself. I'm an economics student. I have a little bit of a passing interest in history. I like complicated games and I like explaining them. And I don't necessarily mind talking about something like my research during the game or, you know, just an interesting tidbit that I had, which maybe isn't necessarily uh, directly related to the game, but is a nice little way of exploring this particular idea and using the game to be a lens through which we can we can view it. So a really good example of this would be, uh, I really like economics. I also know a ton of people who say that it is their least favorite class in school. So what went wrong with me that I wound up liking economics and my friends didn't? Well, there's a lot of things that have gone wrong with me. But with that in mind, um, there's clearly... To my mind, there's a lot to enjoy out of that subject. And so to my you know, to my mind, it's just a matter of figuring out, oh dear, G2A.com wants me to buy things. Let's turn off the notifications. So it's just a matter of finding the right way to show people what I find so interesting about it. Uh, likewise, with a lot of my econ friends, I've been sharing Twitch with them. In fact, we had our department meeting on, um, I guess it was Wednesday. And uh, I spent a lot of the time talking about Twitch. And again, there's a lot of people who don't play games. They will, you know, see it as a big waste of time. I and mean, one of the people I was talking to called it basically a bad habit. You know, apparently I, you know, I, I don't take up smoking, but I, uh, I decided that gaming was my, my drug of choice. And in this case, I was, you know, I was able to go the other way around, which is I can, I've actually been able to explain a couple of issues that I think are interesting in games uh, in terms of economics and, and a way that I think they would actually lead to very interesting problems to study. And so this is just a very long way of saying that obviously this is a bit of a different channel from the normal thing that you will see uh, on Twitch. And I'm really happy that you guys like it enough to keep coming by and, and give me your follows. But, um, by the way, I, I apologize for not being a little more responsive to chat. I will catch up with everybody before, but I'm trying to do my best to, to introduce Jesse Quill by talking about myself. <laughs> um, now, the thing that's great about Jesse Quill is that she is a very gifted entertainer. Um, she's got a great natural capacity for facial expressions and, um, you know, a very great empathy, which I think is important for live streaming because live streaming is very much more focused on the personality. Uh, but one, the one thing that I will say uh, I think we share in common is that if you watch her stream for a while, you'll realize that she very commonly will relate the game to things that are very important to her in her life. 
Um, these could be social justice issues. These could be perspectives that she has on the kinds of stories that she enjoys or thinks should be told. Um, and it doesn't even come down to a question in terms of whether or not uh, I necessarily agree with her on things. There's one subject, and by the way, that I know for a fact I disagree with her on. Um, but it was the throwaway line that she gave one stream, and I don't think she knows which one I'm talking about. So that's my little secret to hold. But with that in mind, um, I think she gives me something that I could aspire to be, because in her case, she's able to talk about things that matter while still being able to be entertaining. Uh, and so one day, maybe when I grow up and become a little bit more comfortable on the, on the Twitch platform, uh, I could aspire to be like her. So if you guys have not clicked on her name and hit the follow button yet, yeah, I know I still haven't told you what I, what I disagree with. Um, but yeah, Jessie Quill is an absolute gem. She is the streamer that all of the big streamers watch on their on their spare time uh, you'll probably see a couple of names that you recognize inside of there and just somebody who's really great to to hang out with so i hope that convinces you to to stop by and more importantly i mean she's somebody who has i think can very much alongside seriously clara lay a claim to helping me find my feet here and uh i'm sure there'd probably be some form of a stream um, but I don't necessarily think this stream would, would quite be in the, the shape that it is right now if I didn't have people like her to, to help me out. So Your ego is huge right now. <laughs> Glad to hear it. All right, everybody. So let me say hi to all of you by names and chat because you had to, had to listen to me talk about myself and, and one of my team members for a while. Endors, somebody who I still remember the very first day that he came in, I was playing Gods Will Be Watching. And... Uh, Always craygasming <laughs> at my voice, which I'm still still trying to get over. Longtime friend of the stream. Real Skeleton Killman, newer member of the stream, but thank you very much for stopping by again. Always great to see you here. Pumpkin Man, good to see you too. Jesse Quill, I've obviously spent so much time here. CPO Williams, another very long-standing member of the channel. Somebody who actually has donated uh, a copy of Horse Lords. Uh, for the stream here. We're not playing Horse Lords right now because that would corrupt this particular save file, but we will be doing a Mongolian playthrough once I complete my Holy Roman Empire run through. Um, and yes, Skeleton Killman, you know Endors from the channel, but only only that. Uh, Jesse, oh, sorry, Jesse, well, I completely didn't reply to your, your statement on Saints Row 4. Uh, I don't know how hilarious I am, but... <laughs> I will do my best for sure. Um, when Jock goes up, he wants to be Jesse Quill. Give me the Caitlyn. Uh, <laughs> all right, guys. I've caught up. I found he sounded familiar. Yes, to the old Captain Sparkles. All right, guys. So... We talked a little bit about uh, where we are in the Holy Roman Empire. So one of the big things that we have been doing from uh, generation to generation in this playthrough has been... And he points it out like it's a big deal. <laughs> it is a big deal to me, CPO Williams. I, was, I mean... Clearly there have been multiple donations to the stream uh, at this point. So, you know, it, it's not like... A, completely blows my mind every single time but um the supreme vote of confidence that uh that a donation shows it it's meaningful it's impactful um so you know to basically say that rather than you play horse lords yourself you would like to donate which it, i mean number one i'm going to be playing that on my own time right uh but number two to let everybody else benefit from it, right? So this is helping me stream. This is my enjoyment and my private time. Uh, that's absolutely fantastic. So thank you, CPO Williams. So yeah, we were talking about uh, the Vassal Limit. Now we've got a nice little spot here, 45 out of 45, but uh, we've had to give up some kingdoms to do so. So for instance, right now we still hold the kingdom of West Francia and Middle Francia, which we stole from my brother by killing him. We still hold Lombardy, uh, but in terms of what we've had to give up, uh, we gave up the Kingdom of Bavaria. My God! Good. 
Jesse Quill. Check your Snapchat later to see the biggest. No, I'm sorry. That's I shouldn't be saying that on this channel. Oh my God, Jesse Quill. <laughs> um. Well, I do believe that is the biggest tip. So. <laughs> oh God. Um. Well, I kind of already said a bunch of nice stuff about her, so I'm not quite sure how I'm supposed to respond to the largest donation that I have gotten on this channel by several orders of magnitude. <laughs> Isn't that only like $23 American? Pumpkin Man 18? I don't care. I will. I am happy that my my fake Monopoly money uh, goes towards, um, <laughs> uh, goes towards less. Uh, and thank you for the wispy Jesse Coil. I'll, I've, there's one quick comment. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, I have an idea for that. I'll, I'll follow up with you, uh, regarding your intentions, but that's ex extremely kind of you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, our dollar is very bad right now. Um, Jesus Christ, Jesse. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I will... I will... I'll, I don't know, write an epic poem or something like that to, to properly express the... There is no emoticon to express what I'm feeling right now. Thank you so much. Poor Canada. Eh, it's... So, okay, so we talked... Actually, one of the first things that I ever sent to Jesse Quill was this big, long, boring explanation of foreign exchange. So the thing about Canada is, is that we... Actually, here's an interesting question. I'm going to be so boring to you right now. We're going to take away the game. We're going to take away the game. Um, these aren't browsers. Let's take a look at Canada's current account. CPO Williams has cool news. Well, I'm well. I am looking for Canada's current account. I want to hear. I want to hear your cool news, CPO Williams. Okay, maybe the fact that I'm streaming might make this load too slow, but... A bit of crackle again? Thank you for letting me know, Skeleton Killman. That's actually been happening a little bit more frequently. Quite sure what's going on. You get to go to PAX South, that's outstanding! I believe there's going to be a couple of Team Panda members there as well. So hopefully you get a chance to catch up with them. All right. What's the best way to explain this? Um, so I can't quite remember exactly how this may not actually make any sense. Um, I can't quite remember when the Canadian dollars started being so bad, but let's take a particular attention 2014, 2013, 2012. So you see this total balance here, right? That Canada is currently running deficits. Now, in the end, like the best situation would be that everybody kind of nets out, right? There, nobody's a net borrower, nobody's a a net uh, net lender, but that that doesn't happen right here. But notice that we have like negative 58, negative 47, negative 59, probably the lowest that it's hit. Well, it's all actually almost negative 60. Uh, then 56, then 41. So what happens? In one sense, you can say that uh, a weak currency will be 
bad because the things that you want to import are more expensive. Uh, but of course, your exports become relatively more attractive. People want to buy them more. And so if you take a look here, we can see, you know, in this case, receipts, we've got goods and services. And probably goods would be a much bigger factor for Canada just because, well, I mean, it'd probably be large for every, anyone. But of course, Canada does sell its natural resources. And I mean, in this case, it probably doesn't tell us a whole lot here because we've got um, a constant upward trend. Uh, but in this case, you know, the price of oil has been falling, which is why our currency is doing so poorly. Um, but it can actually also be one of these equalizing measures, which is that if people are not importing our exports, a weaker dollar can actually help us. So in this case, the question sometimes is, you know, what are you using that money for? Um, if you are somebody who works in an export industry, a weak Canadian dollar actually isn't necessarily that bad. And historically, there have been governments which have deliberately kept the Canadian dollar uh, at, a, at a lower price, uh, much like what people accuse China of doing, uh, specifically so that they can assist the sectors that, uh, that rely on those exports. All right, let me just take a look at everybody. Uh, excited to learn this? You have no idea what's going on when it comes to this stuff? Well, I mean, it's complicated, right, P uh, Pumpkin Man 18 There is no... So the, the theory that I can give you about exchange rate determination is that a lot of it relies on people's moods. Well, what, you know, there's no predictive power behind that, right? It explains, yeah, it goes up when people feel good about a currency and it goes down when they feel bad about it. But I, I can't tell you what the Canadian dollar is going to do tomorrow. Um, and, you know, if you look at things like the Canadian, uh, the Bank of Canada interest rate announcements, traditionally that is that should have a tangible effect on the Canadian dollar, but there's a whole game of anticipation that gets played. So generally you don't actually see the uh, responses that you expect from uh, Bank of Canada announcements simply because it's already priced into the currency. Um, but in the particular case here is that our, our most attractive export, our oil, uh, has fallen in price. And so as a result, uh, because much of Canada's sort of wealth is tied up in that particular resource, uh, Canada's assets are relatively less attractive. And so basically it means that there's less demand for Canadian dollars, uh, which translates to a depreciation of the currency. Um, but again, it's not a free fall for the currency because in the end Canada is still producing things that people want. and with a, an attractively low Canadian dollar, that just means that people can buy more. It's like all the Canadian goods have gone on sale for Americans. It just means that when I import stuff, so if I want to buy something on Humble Bundle, I wind up spending quite a bit more on the foreign exchange. So. <laughs> Skeleton Killman doesn't have any money. Um, CPO Williams gets to meet Jesse Cole. That's right, I keep forgetting. Jesse Cole goes to basically every PAX in the world. Too much free healthcare. Yeah, Jesse Cole, don't make me show you what the American one looks like. <laughs> Uh, nobody wants Canadian services. Yeah, well, it's true. Um, in fact, I'll show you another thing that I'm working on. Um, I didn't make this. Um, come on. It's one of these ones. Nope. Research is good friend. Uh, where is it? I hope there's an embarrassing tab open somewhere here. Um, this is actually relevant to Canadian, uh, Canadian services. We will get around to playing a game, guys. I know. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Rates and rents. I got bookmarks too. A couple. <laughs> it's good to see that Chalk is a giant nerd more often than anyone who just talks to us. Yeah. Um, so this... I think there's more information that they could give us here. But there's an interesting table in this report. 
So this is this is royalty and license fees from 2009. Uh, this data, I think, comes from the World Bank. Yeah. So the idea here of the royalty and license fees. So this would be intellectual property that is held by a country. So, you know, you have a patent on X, Y, or Z. And then in order to use that patent, you need to, you know, you need to... Sorry, if you own the patent, somebody needs to pay you. And if um, you want to use somebody else's patent, you need to pay them. So this goes across borders. And in the case of Canada, in 2009, we spent more on other people's patents than people paid for us. Now, this is particularly interesting given the fact that uh, a consortium of um, basically rivals of Google bought a very famous Canadian telecom company's patent portfolio, Nort Nortel Networks. And uh, I mean, Canadians usually associate Nortel with business failure. But uh, Zed is so cool. <laughs> of course, you still don't know what a lot of what he's saying is mean. That's fine. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. You don't get Zed. It's the Queen's English. If if you were still colonists, you would still say Zed too. Okay, fine, but real skeleton kill like. How about B, right? The letter B would also fit that definition of being a letter with three letters. Hello, Black Dahlia. Good to see you too. Black Dahlia is another uh, member of Team Panda. By the way, you will notice we're now at 394 uh, followers. An incredible number given the fact that just a month ago we were at 300 followers and somebody in addition to Jesse Quill uh, who is responsible for that is Black Dahlia who scolds his chat for not following me so if you guys could please reciprocate he's a fantastic guy we actually wind up doing a lot of co-streams together uh, although hopefully we'll do some more in the future but he is a fun guy to watch on his own he's actually uh, i was talking about this with shand at the last twitch meetup uh, it's very interesting that uh, twitch is a very democratizing platform right generally you don't need a lot of hardware to get set up to stream on twitch and yet you're not seeing the experimentation that you would expect. Uh, and I think Dahlia is one of the people who is experimenting with his Asmar casts. So, oh, thank you very much for the host, Jesse Quill. And welcome to every Footnotes, thank you very much for that follow. Uh, we will be playing games at some point, but I did want to explain uh, Canadian services. And this is actually a little bit of research that I'm doing. Um, in addition to the, that copyright stuff that I'm working on, uh, this is one thing that I've been watching for myself and I want to try and, and do. So, so basic... Oh, God. So basically, uh, this graph is just a snapshot in 2009. I think there's a couple of other ways that you can measure it. But what does this say about Canada? Well, it says that we're spending more money on other people's IP than people are uh, paying us for our own. And generally, a lot of our IP is wound up being sold to the Americans or the smart Canadians just go down to the States to wind up, um, you know, wind up plying their trade there. And so we have a deficit. And I mean, if you see the company that we're with, right, Singapore, China, Ireland, I mean, all of these make sense, right? China is not quite, I mean, they're on their way. They're definitely working towards it. Um, but they're on a point where they are a net importer of IP. And, you know, unsurprisingly, the United States is at the very top and they're at the top by a ridiculous amount. Uh, Japan following up. Um, I was a little surprised to see France here. Um, but again, like this is the whole, this is the sort of the the weighting of, uh, of the net amount in terms of royalty and license fees. Now, uh, there's a couple of things about this which uh, for me aren't as useful. So this is just one year, right? This could have been a particularly bad year for Canada and maybe you know, 2010 or 2008 was better. Uh, it wasn't, incidentally. Uh, you can actually, so if I, you just, anybody can do this. You can go to the World Bank, download the raw data that they used for this and just subtract the, the payments from the receipts. So uh, one of the things that I wanted to do was basically make a graph, a time series of uh, these countries. I mean, I'm particularly interested in Canada because that's, you know, it's the country that I live in, and it's also uh, the prof that I'm working for uh, does a lot of IP work, and uh, she, you know, she focuses on Canada. She advises the government on a few things. 
So, one, I'd be interested in sort of seeing the Canadian graph. You know, is it going further into a deficit? Is it, you know, going up or does it stay relatively constant? Uh, one thing that would be very poor for comparison would be to, you know, look at these. I mean, the netting out isn't necessarily that bad, but one thing you can say about the states in this very large figure here is that the states is an enormous economy, right? So one thing you might want to do is uh, look at the amount that this is being spent on as a fraction of GDP. Or alternatively, what might be even more important is as a product of GNP, which is maybe a little lesser known one. So GDP uh, sort of takes as its, um, as its boundary um, the, the geography, right? So things that are produced within the United States, even if they are by foreign firms, fall under GDP. So if I went down to Seattle and I opened a coffee shop and it was just a Canadian chain of that coffee shop, I would still fall under US GDP because this is a good or service that's being produced on US soil. Uh, GNP is the idea of the goods and services being bought and sold by the nation. And so in this case, um, you know, my coffee shop down in the States wouldn't fall under Canadian GDP, but it would fall under Canadian GNP, and it wouldn't appear in the United States GNP. So if you want to track the actual activity of a nation as opposed to uh, just what's going on within its borders, that, that uh, geographical boundary, uh, maybe it would be a little bit more appropriate to use that. And in this case here, you know, is, you know, $4.5 billion US, okay, that seems like a really big number, but what is Canada's, you know, what is the size of Canada's economy? It's going to be larger than Singapore, almost certainly. So in this case here, this number seems smaller than Singapore. But um, and I mean, in this case, it could be that Singapore is putting a very large amount of its resources into, you know, 